Welcome to Homeschool Testing Services video on interpreting your CTP results. The CTP allows you to assess your student's growth and performance at the time of testing. The goal of testing is to give you an idea of your student's areas of academic strengths and weaknesses. Your student CTP results will give you a picture of what your student knows well and areas of where they need improvement. The CTP assessment will give you a snapshot of how your student has grown academically over the past year. I want to remind you that your student's test results do not define who they are as a person. A test cannot measure effort, focus, personal character, academic endurance, or creativity. It is important to remember that skills that are assessed on the CTP test may not be something that you covered this year in school. Testing assessments can help you to build your relationship with your child. Together, you can set achievement goals for the next school year. The Comprehensive Individual Student Report is the report that you will receive when purchasing the CTP online assessment. This report provides valuable results of how your students scored on the CTP assessment. At the top of the report, you will find your student's name, grade, and the test level they took. Our sample student was tested on nine subtests listed here. Each subtest is given a scale score. This scale score is then compared to three different norm groups. Let's look at the scale score. The scale score is based on the actual number of questions your student answered correctly. Your student's raw score, the actual number of questions they got right, is converted to a scale based on the difficulty level of each question, hence the name scale score. Raw scores cannot be compared between test years, but scaled scores can. By converting each score to a scale score, this allows your student's score to be compared year after year. Your student's scale score should increase each year. You will not be able to compare your student's scale score between different test brands. You can compare scale scores on the CTP year after year. Let's look at an example of how the scale score is calculated. In this example, student A correctly answered five difficult questions on the test and correctly answered five easy questions. Student B correctly answered two difficult questions and correctly answered eight easy questions. Even though they both correctly answered 10 questions, student A's scale score will be higher than student B's because student A correctly answered more of the difficult questions. Your student's scale scores are then compared to three different norm groups. A norm group is a group of students from other schools who also took the CTP around the same time of year and in the same grade as your student. The national norm is comprised of a representative sample of students from across the nation. This test was last nationally normed in 2018. The suburban norm is comprised of students from actual suburban public schools who administered the CTP and the scores are averaged over the last three years. The independent norm is comprised of students from actual independent schools who administered the CTP and the scores are averaged over the past three years. Let's look at the percentile rank for each norm group. The percentile rank indicates how many students in a norm group had scores that were the same or lower than this student's score. A percentile does not indicate the percentage of questions that your student answered correctly. This student's percentile rank for reading comprehension on the national norm is 80. This student scored better than 80% of other students nationally in reading comprehension. Now look at the suburban norm. Here, the percentile rank is 78. The percentile rank for the suburban norm is less than the national norm because the suburban norm is a stronger competitive norm group than the national norm. 
For the independent norm, the percentile rank is 57. Here, the students scored better than 57% of students who took the CTP at independent schools. Independent schools have a stronger academic norm pool, so the competition is tougher. This is why the student's percentile rank has gone down with each norm group, as the student is compared to a stronger group of students. Each of these scores are for the same subtest, reading comprehension. This student's scale score is 700 in reading comprehension. The percentile difference in each norm group, 80, 78, and 57, is based on the group of students we are comparing this student's scale score to. Next to the percentile rank, you will see a stanine. A stanine is a quick way to compare your student's performance to the performance of students in a norm group. Stanines are calculated by dividing the student's percentile rank in a norm group into nine subgroups. These stanines are numbered one through nine. One is the lowest stanine and nine is the highest. These stanine subgroups are not equivalent in size. This chart shows how stanines are broken down into nine parts. Each percentile rank is broken into a range and is divided into one of the nine stanine groups. The numbers on the bars 4, 7, 12, 17, 20, etc. are the percentage of students whose score falls into each stanine. For a stanine 3, 12% of students will fall into the stanine 3 category based on their percentile rank between 11 and 22. Compare that to stanine 5, which has 20% of the students and a percentile rank between 40 and 59. A stanine of 4, 5, or a 6 is considered average. 54% of students will receive an average score with a stanine of 4, 5, or 6. A stanine of 1, 2, or a 3 is considered below average. 23% of students will score below average on a subtest's scale score. A stanine of 7, 8, or 9 is considered above average performance. 23% of students score will score above average on a given subtest. Our sample students scored a percentile of 93% on verbal reasoning when compared to the national norm. If we look here at percentile 93, that lines up with a stanine of 8, and 7% of the students score a stanine of 8 on a given subtest. Stanine 8 is above average. This student scored above average in verbal reasoning. Next, let's look at page 2 of the Comprehensive Individual Student Report. This page will break down even further each subtest into smaller classifications. Under verbal reasoning, students are tested in analogical reasoning, categorical reasoning, and logical reasoning. If you look under vocabulary, students are tested in word meaning, precision, and application. You will see here the student was presented with 40 verbal reasoning questions and they attempted all 40 questions. The number of questions presented and attempted should always be the same unless your student ran out of time on a subtest. The CTP is a time test. Checking the number of questions presented against the number attempted will reveal if your student attempted each question in a subtest. You will see here for verbal reasoning, the student answered 40 verbal reasoning questions. These questions were broken into subcategories. 13 questions were analogical reasoning, 12 questions were categorical reasoning, and 15 questions were logical reasoning. Each category is broken into subcategories evenly except mathematics. For mathematics, you will see 60 questions were presented. The pound sign next to the 60 indicates that questions are counted twice for content and process categories. Each mathematics question was put into two subcategories. One question may have fit in the measurement category and in the problem solving category. So this question is counted twice in the subcategories for mathematics, once under measurement and once under problem solving. This method helps to better give you a picture of how your student is doing in the mathematics subsections. The student percent mastery is not the percent of questions your student answered correctly. 
the student percent mastery is an estimated percent a student would achieve if he or she could take all of the items in a respective content area and standard. Student percent mastery of content scores have a higher degree of reliability compared to, per, compared to percent correct scores because the percent mastery of content scores are based on both the characteristics of the items answered correctly and the student's performance level. Here for verbal reasoning, it is estimated that this student has mastered 70% of the content for verbal reasoning. The student percent mastery is then compared to the independent norm average percent mastery. Remember that the independent norm is a stronger academic norm pool than the national norm. Page 3, 4, and 5 of the Comprehensive Individual Student Report provides you with the content standards mastery graph. This graph shows you a picture of the results from the last page we looked at page two of the report. This page displays a picture of where your student lies with respect to the independent group mean. Here on page four, you will see where the student has scored above average of the independent norm group mean in some subjects. Here the student has scored below average of the independent norm group in equations and inequalities of algebra one by looking for outliers you can find where your student excels and where their weaknesses are page five lists the science comparison in four areas of science nature of science physical science earth science and life science page six of the report shows how the student scored in percentile rank compared to the national norm. On this page only, the yellow band indicates a probable range the student could earn if tested with many different editions of the test. Any given test presents only a small sample of questions to assess a student's skills and knowledge. If a different selection of questions were used to assess the same skills and knowledge, a student's score might be expected to differ based on the skills assessed. The yellow band indicates this probable range a student may score within. The black diamond indicates where the student did perform compared to the national norm percentile rank. Page 7 of the report shows a graph of how the student scored in each subtest with regards to each norm. Turquoise shows the student's percentile rank against the national norm. Blue is the student's percentile rank against the suburban norm. Yellow is the percent student's percentile rank against the independent norm. As you can tell here, Algebra 1 and Science have not been normed on the national or suburban level yet. Back on page 1 of the comprehensive report, you will find your students' lexile and quantile scores. These are produced through the company Metametrics, Inc. These are valuable scores that you can use to support your students' learning. Please check out Lexile.com on how you can pair your student's Lexile score to books that match their reading level and content interests. You will also find helpful resources to help you with your student's reading journey. Your student's quantile score can be matched to math concepts they are ready to learn. Visit quantiles.com for more information and resources to help with your student with mathematics. Thank you for trusting homeschool testing services for your testing needs.